Clint from the Farmer's Grove. I want to give an update on the farm, taking a horse pasture that's been abused to a permaculture farm in the future. And I just want to take you step by step. This is about the third or fourth update that we've done. Okay, to start off with, you see those big black uh, round looking hay bale things down there? That's actually 14,000 pounds a four foot by half inch rubber mat that's never seen anything but wood chips and that's going to be placed inside of the rows on the asparagus beds we're putting in about a thousand of them here next month that way i will never ever once have to weed that plus it gives me hardscape to put water into the asparagus instead of going anywhere else so that's going to be kind of cool it's starting to green up a little bit we've been clearing the the front of where the horse arena used to be inside of there now we got it marched off where the the chicken fence is going to go up we probably have close to 200 trees inside of there for the chickens to do their thing and to have shade i uh, did a video uh, showing these humps so if you haven't seen that that you need to go look at that it's composting in place inside of an orchard it's just a very simplistic way to get nutrients in the soil and what you're seeing here with all this straw guys is uh it's in between what is already coming up all that really lush green you see right there and i'm going to show you some of the clover that's come up that is oats now underneath the straw kind of doing the one straw revolution thing except i'm using seeds and you'll see when we get to the other end there is a dun 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 a rototiller i explained to you how i'm using that on this but inside of uh this hay there there's going to be all kind of a land race there's wildflowers and beans and peas and and lettuce and um sunflowers beets gr uh, mustard greens turnips all kind of stuff is going to be growing where this haze at it'll probably be about another month and this look totally different but uh we're going to have pollinators and we're going to be able to get a yield off of this it's going to be kind of a mess i wouldn't suggest doing this unless you know what those plants look like but uh, we're getting these around all the trees and the main purpose is I want to have as much life and as much roots and as much biomass to get around these trees because tra trees are like people in a community and they don't like being alone. So I want to make happy trees. I got to make sure they got plenty of friends around them and that's what all of this is. I've got it over several beds now going up through the persimmons and the apples and over where the sea berries are down here through the jujubes. And then some more apples and some chase seedless and elderberries going out through there. And then we get to where a lot of the pawpaws are at going around that way. But you can really start to see when I put the hay down, the shape that this is going to be. And I think it's going to be, besides a very productive uh, food forest, it's going to be pretty neat. Now, if you're thinking, why am I putting out so many seeds to try to get that? I'm overseeding this. I'll admit that. And there's going to be a lot of seeds that are going to get crowded out and it's going to do anything. And if you think, well, why didn't he just go put wood chips and cardboard down? You need to understand what you're looking at right here, size-wise, is about two and a half to three football fields. So there's no way that I can do the wood chips the way that I, that I did in my other one. I've got piles of wood chips here, but they're too fresh to put down. So we're going to go the live route. Here's some of the blueberries. Going out through here, I'm getting as much uh, wood and fungus in here as I can. We've got some compost I'll put around the berries, and then once those chips up there get some age, we're going to be putting the wood chips down in here, or if I can find some really old sawdust, that'd be really good. Now here is some hardy citrus. goes into apricots, more blueberries. But this is the top planting on the property, and I'm going to be hopefully get one of these in a week. Uh, there's so much we've got going on right now. This is a, a micro swell. I'm using a rototiller to put these in. It's a really neat way to do that without a lot of energy, honestly. And, I, and I, I'm sure I'll be showing you that down the road. But we got a swell now on the top side that what water comes in. And I can see we just had a good rain that the silt in there. This, this did hold water for a while, so that's pretty cool. Sea berries are coming to life, which is, which is really neat. We're starting to get leaves and flowers on some of the plums and the, the apples and pears and, and peaches and stuff. So that's really good. All the gummy berries look like they came out of transplant pretty good. So happy about that. Now, I've never really dealt that much with fescue. The, the property that we had before 
had what I call AKA uh, devil grass, which is Bermuda grass for the feud forest. But uh, I seeded some white clover, some red clover and some oats. It's really greening up. You can see how the clover is really, you know, setting down a lot of nitrogen, and a lot of biological into the life. Some of the Siberian pea shrubs are starting to put on, you know, along with uh, some of the trees that are just coming on. In between these rows, a lot of the real fine straight grass that's coming up is oats. So I put that in there. So before I, I take the rototiller around these trees and I'm only setting it so it barely breaks the grass. I just want some soil. And I, you know, in optimum, you'd bring your chickens out here and you do all that, but we got to get stuff in the ground. So I'm just getting the grass taken off with the rototiller. I'm going down through here. This is what it looks like before. And this is what it looks like afterwards. These are pawpaw trees, sunflowers. As you can see, I've left islands in the middle of just oats and clover. All the way down through there. And then once my wood chips get some age on them, I'll be putting wood chips and stuff around the pawpaw trees. All these are pawpaws, mimosa, and hardy bananas. But I'm just, I'm just quickly, I just take a, a trail down through here. If there's a big opening, I take the, the, the tiller just to get the grass down. That way I'm putting the seed straight on what soil is there, put some straw on top, and we're gonna see what happens with that. Now inside of this, we've got 121 pawpaw trees. Some of them will be left in place. The reason I put them in there the way I did, a lot of them are gonna be used for nursery to be moved around. But this is this is kind of what the farm's coming along and it's starting to actually, you're starting to see results, which which is really neat because all winter, all I've been looking at is sticks. I mean, you can see the oats are doing very well mixed in with the clover. Got a small mimosa tree right there next to a hardy banana. I mean, it's really taken off. And what's interesting to me is it's almost seemed like it suppressed some of the fescue this early all on its own, which is really neat. You can see some that it has not. But it, and a lot of this has done a very, very good job. A lot of people are going to cringe when they see this monster. But this is uh, about the only tool on the farm. It's really helped me in getting the tree nursery stock out. It's also a really neat way I figured out to make uh, micro swells with it, which is really cool. And when I'm plowing around these trees, or not plowing, rototilling, it's a once in a lifetime thing. So it's not like something uh, that I'm gonna do every year. Plus, I had to do something to be able to get down and, and get some of that fescue so I could at least give the seeds and stuff a chance to get to it. To get stuff start, started, sometimes you just have to do what you have to do. The, the compost you see over there is Jerusalem artichokes. Japanese plums are doing well. That's one of the bigger trees. I really had to prune it back. I was afraid it just wouldn't have the roots to survive. And here you can see some of the rows where the pawpaw trees are at. That, that's actually a, a pretty neat pattern in there. Once it all comes in, you'll see it. But this over here is going to be about 80% uh, pure asparagus in there with some vegetables. We've already got some more Jerusalem artichokes and some potatoes planted. Up next to the fence, you see the dark spots. That's all Asian pears going down through there with some more rootstock in. So there you have it. That's what it's taking a, a just a, a rundown horse pasture and turn it into a permaculture food forest slash orchard farm that we're gonna we cannot wait to just get some more life into this place.